Starfield is here and as we've gone through it, we've found a whole bunch of interesting stuff and you can pretty easily decide not to do some of the more interesting content in the game. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks 10 weird side quests in Starfield you shouldn't skip. Starting off with number 10, it's Breach of Contract. This is a side quest that takes a little time to see. It's actually Barrett's side quest, which only becomes available after talking to him multiple times, which only happens if you got him as a companion for a, a pretty long time. When you finally do unlock this quest it seems like it's going to be fairly mundane barrett wants to investigate the suspicious death of a friend he managed to get some new evidence on his own and he wants you to come with him to meet a lawyer lawyers legal meetings uh, so exciting sounding but when you talk to them the lawyer tells you in so many words you need a lot more evidence to prove the mining company that barrett's buddy worked for was responsible for his death documentation recordings a witness something it's been so long. How could we find anything like that? Now you're running around the city of Gagarin looking for evidence. You're checking an old apartment, you're looking at old mining logs, and eventually it takes you to the mine where he died. Now there's a bunch of nasty spider monsters around, but otherwise it seems like a normal mine until you get deeper in and the walls turn into gray biomass. You start finding plants and giant spores growing down there. Apparently there's an entire biological system of microorganisms living under the surface of this planet, and the mining company's disruption of that ecosystem led to the entire planet's ecosystem collapsing. It's a pretty weird turn for what was an otherwise straightforward quest, but the mine itself is pretty creepy the deeper into it you get. There aren't any awesome rewards for finishing this one, but it's worth doing because it's probably my favorite companion quest. It's a lot of fun, the story is really interesting, and it's weird, just not normal, especially for a Bethesda game. And number nine is Juno's Gambit, a, a cool one that comes out of nowhere while you're exploring space. Randomly, you'll come across this ship under attack from an ecliptic ship. Pretty standard in Starfield, but when you dock the ship to check on the crew, you find two Ryujin operatives and a big computer that's talking. So here's where the quest actually starts, revealing there's two operatives that are here to destroy this machine, which reveals itself to be the Juno probe that was somehow uplifted and became self-aware. Answer, false. Explanation. NASA programmed Juno. While Juno traveled, Juno became me. Error. Processing. Correction. I became me. If that sounds kind of familiar, you might be thinking of Star Trek The Movie, where the Voyager 6 probe was given intelligence by a mysterious race of machine beings. Um, pretty much the same thing happened here, with the unusual side effect of making Juno sound like HK-47 from Kodor. I have to imagine this was on purpose. My physical abilities are well above those of your average meatbag, as are my sensor functions. An assassin, if you would. I don't know, though. It's up to you to decide what to do with the AI. Do you kill it and protect humanity, or trust that it's harmless and let it live on? It's your classic sci-fi moral dilemma, played out in just a few minutes, and overall it's a pretty interesting little mission that's easy to miss, but worth seeking out. And number eight is Space Frogs from Outer Space. This very small, very easy to miss mission is found in Sidonia on Mars in the residential area. You can find this kid sitting on the ground in a hallway, and if you talk to him, they'll send you up to put posters around the city. Space Frogs from Outer Space is the poster. It's Space Frog from Outer Space, and he's a little frog character that I made up. The children's drawings, uh, but each one is unique and has a certain charm to it, but I mean, why wouldn't you? It's a space frog from outer space. Why wouldn't you get behind that? Once you put up all the posters, you return to the kid, mission ends. Like I said, extremely basic, but the reward is absolutely worth it. Now, you can craft your own space frog pictures to hang up at your base. Like, look at this majestic thing. How could you not cover your base from top to bottom with these? Yeah, looks a little deranged, but uh, that's it. End of sentence. At number seven, a tree grows in New Atlantis, found by talking to a scientist staring at a big tree in New Atlantis. This very creatively named mission starts out a little dry, uh, but gets weirder as it goes on. 
At first, the scientists just want you to plant some sensors around the city for vague reasons. Pretty simple stuff. But you do that and you return to them and you find out the tree is for some reason actually a danger to New Atlantis. The whole situation with the tree is pretty silly, honestly, but the game acknowledges it. Your character is especially full of zingers in this one, making tree jokes and constantly suggesting you just cut the tree down as dialogue options. This is a quest where someone says a tree is upset and the consequences could be dire, which sounds like a Futurama line. They're definitely being a little tongue-in-cheek here. A tree is upset? Few scientists are something else. It's all ridiculous. They know it sounds ridiculous. Nobody's pretending it's not. The quest culminates into you breaking into a Freestar Museum to steal a literal olive branch that is, for some reason, going to pacify the tree's wrath. All completely beyond silly. But it's worth it. And honestly, this is the kind of thing that keeps me coming back to Bethesda games. You get these really serious missions and well-thought-out quest lines, and you get stuff like this, too. Because it's certainly not the creation engine that keeps me coming back. I know I have largely got my mouth shut about that in the recent Starfield videos, but whenever I really think about something that's great about Starfield, that's what's creeping into the back of my mind. I just had to say it, sorry. This is a great example of why the creation engine is worth it, at least. At number six is Sabotage. Uh, normally not gonna talk about faction quests on this list. They're all really good, they're all worth seeing, um, but they're mostly not weird, except this one, which is unusual in a lot of ways. This quest is found deep in the Ryujin Industries faction quest line. I'm just gonna come across and say it. It's a quest where you get the power to control people's minds. For most of that story, you're hearing the mysterious new project could have major consequences for all the settled systems. And you're like, hoo hoo, what did that mean? And uh, in this mission, it becomes clear what that means. Cause they install it in your head. It's a prototype neuroamp that gives you the manipulation power, which allows you to control people like puppets. Literally the first thing you do with this power is you use the power on a person, and when they're under control, you command them to pick up a key and then go to the door and so on and so forth. The trick. It's a ridiculously powerful ability for stealth, and now you have this power for the rest of the game. You can force enemies to fight each other, or if you're sneaking, you can force a guard to leave their post and look at something else, giving you a, a great little opportunity to sneak by, or you can just have them follow you in a dark corner so you can take them out. It's a literal game changer of an ability that's bizarrely complex and powerful compared to anything else you get in the game, and it's only found by doing this quest. And number five is Loose Ends, uh, one of those quests I passed on for a long time because it seems very mundane, but it goes in some really fun directions. It starts when you first enter Neon and see a guy getting busted by security. You can go and talk to him in the lockup and he'll beg you to help him out. Please, have a heart. You need to help me. From here, you meet up with his boss, deal with a little problem, and then things get a little more interesting when the boss offers you a job. You look like talent, serious talent. And no one knows you. Yes. This leads to the real weird and interesting side quest called Fishy Business, when you're instructed to get a job at the Xenofresh Fishery as a chemist so you can make the illegal drug Aurora. To do that, you literally have to go to their office, put in a job application, complete with some really funny responses that do get commented on later. Uh, you get the job, put on a fresh suit, and from there you just work a shift as a chemist, getting resources from the conveyor belt, and then you use them to make Aurora, and then drop the final product into a hopper where you're graded on how quickly you can do it. Something for personal use or for sale? This is a game that most quests either involve talking to people or shooting them, so this one stands out as particularly unique and fun. At number four is The Audition, uh, another one that sounds more just plain odd than weird, which you'll understand what I mean by in a second, but for some reason the game lets you join a gang. They're called the Ebside Strikers, and you can find the recruiter in the bar in Ebside and Neon. It's a surreal moment, especially if you're like me and you've already gone through all the region Industries faction quests. I'm already top dog in Neon. Why slum it with these gangster nobodies? Your companion expresses their disbelief as well, saying things like, of all the things I expected to do today, joining a gang was not one of them. Joining a street gang was not something I felt we needed to do today, but so be it. 
Uh, the first mission, fairly basic. They just want you to steal something from a warehouse without getting violent. Not too difficult. And for your reward, you get the striker outfit. Pretty awesome cyberpunk looking jacket and a face mask combo. The quest line doesn't stop there. There's multiple missions where you can do stuff working for these guys. It eventually escalates into a full-blown gang war, but your rewards never get better than what you get in the first mission. Still, it's worth seeing it through to the end and actually not a bad set of quests. More just because narratively it's interesting. And number three is Tourists Go Home. This one's pretty small, it's easy to miss, and it's found in the mostly unimportant colony of New Homestead. It was found on Titan in the Sol system. Most of the side quests here, very basic, not that interesting. In all honesty, in terms of mechanical complexity, this one isn't that exciting either, but the premise and the rewards are some of the weirdest in the game. If you wander around, you'll get an activity to talk to on the colony doctor who doesn't like tourists, which is no joke, because when you talk to her, she concocts this whole scheme where you, and Seriously, she wants you to dress up in a costume to scare away tourists as a monster. It's a Scooby-Doo plot. It's just that usually the guy who shouts, I would have gotten away with it if not for you meddling kids uh, after they get unmasked in the end. It's usually the big bad villain instead of some guy who got hired by a doctor who was annoyed. It's a ridiculous costume too, and your goal is to just go to a random location and scare some tourists. You do it three times, then the doctor lets you keep the costume, which is totally unique and quite ridiculous looking. Uh, apparently, it's a tardigrade costume that used to be a school mascot. Like, whatever you say, game. It's completely worthless as armor, but it's just so weird and goofy looking that I can't help but love it. And number two is First Contact. This one is found when you first go to Paradiso, the first big quest in the area. It starts off with an intriguing premise where a strange ship is orbiting the planet, making unidentifiable noises, and it gets more interesting from there. The CEO asks you to investigate, and when you dock with the ship and don't find aliens, but Earth colonists that have been adrift in space for hundreds of years longer than anyone else, it's kind of wild. We weren't expecting to find life, let alone human life out here. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. You thought you were the only ones? I am afraid you have been unaware of a great many things. The ship was made before everyone left Earth using grab jump drives, so it took them a lot longer to reach their destination. They're presented as sort of Star Trek-like explorers and idealists, but the planet they've chosen to settle on is owned and operated by a private corporation that doesn't want anything to do with them. So they send you back to negotiate on their behalf, and that's when the quest takes a turn for the cynical. The owners of Paradiso are hilariously blasé about the plight of these colonists and dismiss their claims outright. Paradiso actually have legal documents to the land on the planet as part of the galactic charter, so the colonists really have no legal grounds to fight them. All the company will do is either let them settle on the planet, but force them to pay all the expenses, basically making them indentured servants, or install a working grav drive on their ship at their expense. These guys are penny pinching to the extreme and won't even pay for a grav drive to get rid of the colonists, so your only options are to doom these guys basically to slavery or foot the bill to get them to go away. At least with a little persuasion, you can lower the price of the drive, but it's still not cheap. And while it's not the solution they wanted, it's a lot better than the alternative. It's one of Starfield's best missions, actually. There's not a lot of shooting or action, but it gives you some very interesting stuff. A, a dilemma that you get to sort out however you choose. And finally, at number one is Mantis. Finding this one's pretty specific. Um, to even start it, you need to read a slate on a dead spacer in the Nova Galactic Shipyard, the place you explore near the start of the game during the mission, The Old Neighborhood. It's pretty easy to miss, but at least you can always come back later if you want. It's on a station in orbit around Earth, so it's not hard to find. The slate's vague, but it talks about a secret outpost that's supposed to hide some amazing treasure. And they're not kidding. The side quest contains some of the best rewards in the entire game. The base itself swarming with spacers trying to get the loot, and it's filled with traps so you have to tread carefully, but it's more than worth it. Get past all the traps, you find the hidden lair of Mantis, a literal superhero who hunts down pirates and criminals, basically space Batman, that's just what they are. There's a Mantis cave and everything, a and the story leading up to it's pretty funny. You can learn more on the identity of the Mantis, how they've died and left behind a legacy for their son to take over as the hero, only you find his corpse about halfway through the place, resentful of the Mantis and annoyed that he couldn't get past all the traps. So when you get inside, the system just assumes you're the new successor to the title of Mantis and unlocks their ship, the Razor Leaf, and you get the Mantis costume. Both pretty awesome, actually. The ship, especially if you're still rolling around in the crappy starter, 
costume's pretty good. You get some special dialogues in certain instances. Uh, and they put a lot of effort in the side quest. It's totally ridiculous, but the rewards speak themselves, particularly the ship. Got a quick bonus for you. Operation Starseed. It's found on the crucible of planet Carbitus 3 in deep in uncharted space. The quest's pretty difficult to reach, but it's easily the most elaborate and ridiculous in the entire game. The crucible itself is totally absurd. It's a colony run by robots and inhabited by deep breath here clones of famous historical figures the first guy you talk to it's franklin roosevelt complete with an atlantic accent and an old-timey suit when your ship landed i feared the robots would shoot you on sight i am greatly relieved that they let you enter our community but you come during a delicate time amelia Earhart, wyatt earp genghis khan they're all there causing trouble whole thing's totally nuts but what makes it so great is all these guys have their own unique costumes. Even the basic colonists have their own costumes, and it's just the start of it. There's an entire mystery to solve about why this project even exists, uh, and also how to free the clones from their current miserable existence. The colony, it's split up into factions, and each leader has their own ideas about how to resolve the problem. And depending on who you choose, you're forced to fight against the side of the colony that disagrees with your decision. There's a whole lot of talk, and a whole lot to talk about, including a side mission where White Earp might not be who he says he is, but the weirdest thing about the whole quest is what you can get after it's all over. Uh, Amelia Earhart as a companion. Seriously, you can tool around in space with one of history's most famous aviators. She's easily the weirdest companion in the whole game, too. And honestly, her skills are not even that good. But it's it's a great and unexpected reward. The quest line is absolutely worth checking out. It's not just extremely weird. It's also really good and one of the game's best. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero and we'll see you next time right here on game ranks